Hello, everyone. I'm happy to present my work today, so let's jump right into it. In prokaryote, the methylome has two main characteristics. It's motif-driven, and there is three types of DNA methylation, 4MC, 5MC, and 6MA. In a 2016 survey of the epigenomic landscape in 230 prokaryotes, they reported that 93% of those organisms had methylated motifs. DNA methylation in prokaryote uh, can play many roles, and the most important and common one is the restriction within the restriction modification system. It also can play a role in DNA repair and gene regulation to a lesser extent. As of today, there is many DNA modification detection methods that were published. And in this slide, I gather a non-exhaustive list of those tools that I classify in two groups. The first one is detection by comparison with trained models and a reference genome. This list includes nanopolish, deep signal, and megalodon, for example. In the second category, we have tools that do detection by comparison with raw data, for example, comparison with native and world genome amplifier data set, uh, uh, data set where DNA modification are effectively removed. For the, fir the first category, those tools are most accurate when the solution are the most accurate solution where the model match the context context or motifs. It means that to get the most out of them, you need to know the motif first. For the second category, it's the tool that can localize DNA modification and motif, but they cannot easily find methylation type and the modified position within the motif. To answer those two questions and effectively characterize methylation motif in prokaryote, we developed a novel method and implemented it in NanoDisco. So the initial processing for NanoDisco is similar to other tools. We sequence the world genome amplifier and native sample. We align the event current levels to the reference genome using NaloPolish um, from Jared Simpson. And then we can uh, generate the current differences and associated statistics using a similar approach that is uh, presented in the nano row preprints from Marcus Stoiberg. From those current differences, we then generate what we call the motif signature. Those are effectively aggregate of current differences at all motif sites where we centered uh, the modified position on zero. So you can see that the motif signature from a modified motif show uh, specific patterns, while an unmodified motif show distribution that are centered on zero. If we look at the motif signature from another 6MA motif, we can see that the motif signature is quite different. And the same observation is made when we look at uh, 4MC motifs. This means that the methylation signal is variable. It depends on the motifs and on the DNA modification type. So from those observations, we wonder if we could build a method that can find which base is modified and what is the DNA modification type. So to do that, we gather a large set of prokaryote data set from uh, seven bacteria which all harbor a total of 46 methylation motifs across the three methylation types. We confirm the motifs uh, characteristic using a rebase database, as well as uh, using some validation with PacBio data for 4MC and 6MA motifs. And we then sequence those samples, the native and world genome amplified sample with the mean ion. From those data, we generated the motif signature for all the 46 motifs and produced this representation using TISNI. Here, each point corresponds to the current differences of one motif site. And from this figure, we can see that the methylation signal is complex and it seems to be motif specific because uh, motifs with the same color are from the same motif sequence. If we color this representation per modification type, we can see that clear um, cluster uh, emerge, which per modification type. So it means that it seems to indicate that we should be able to um, train a classifier to find 
for each methylation motif, what is the modification type? Here, assuming that this TC TTC motif was de novo discovered, we can generate the motif signature. By looking at it, we can see that there is multiple positions where there is significant change in current differences. So it means that we technically we should be able to, by taking those current differences, train a classifier that would predict the modification type. However, to train and use this classifier, we will need to take a vector of current differences at the same distance relative to the modified base, which is not possible when we use the classifier because the modification modified position is unknown. So to resolve this issue, we instead train the classifier using multiple offsets from the modified base, which will uh, allow us to, at the same time, classify and find and predict the modification type and the modified position. So from the 40, 46, the data set with the 46 motif, we extracted current differences and generated a large motif signature data set with each entry label as the, with motif type, the modification type and offset label. So from this data set, we then train a classifier and we evaluated the performances using leave one out cross validation. So it means that we train the classifier using all the motif except one and use these all dot motif or remaining motifs to uh, estimate the performances. From this uh, leave one not cross validation strategy using a neural network modeling, we tested the performances on the 46 gold standard um, motifs and we showed that uh, NanoDisco was highly reliable for typing and fine mapping. We also show that 98% of the motif from those seven bacterial strains were properly typed and fine mapped. We also apply the method on two additional bacteria and show that the 12 motifs were also accurately classified. If you want to take a look at the method, you can check out our GitHub. And there you will find an easy way to install the software as well as a detailed tutorial to uh, get started. If you want to know more about the method, you can check out our preprint in uh, BioArchive. However, in nature, bacterial samples are rarely isolated, and microbiome is becoming more and more relevant for human health and for understanding the environment. However, the, the study of the microbiome is more complex than individual samples because uh, the sequencing will generate highly fragmented metagenome assemblies. So to perform the most um, refined study, you often need to do a binning of those metagenomic sequences. And here, methylation binning can also play a role. Um, in 2017, our group published a methylation binning method with PAC biosequencing. The principle is based on the fact that contigs from the same genome will have the same motif modified, meaning that by identifying which motif are modified in contigs, you can group them together. This approach has also the nice uh, advantages of being able to map mobile genetic elements like plasmid with their host genome. And before our work, there was no method available for methylation binning with nanopore sequencing. So how does it work? So it's also based on the motif signature that we can compute for uh, all contigs in our metagenome. From those motif signature, we define something that we call methylation feature, which we then use to perform the binning. In this heat map, each row corresponds to the methylation, uh, to the contigs, sorry, and each column corresponds to the methylation feature. And you can see that methylation feature value are quite consistent for a given bean. So we apply this method on a most gut microbiome sample. And after computing methylation feature for more than 200,000 common methylated motif, we selected the informative features and plot the results using TSNI again. In this representation, each circle correspond to one contig in the metagenome. And you can see that the contigs been really well together from the same genome. 
And you can also see that the mobile genetic elements as triangle also can be been with uh, host genome. From this basic uh, approach, we also provide a more refined procedure where we perform multiple rounds of motif discovery in those previously identified beans. And we also perform uh, matching uh, mutation binning, which in the end resulted in the identification of 30 beans from 80 motifs discovered. And interestingly, out of those 80 motifs, 45 of those were 5MT motifs, which would have been missed from a PAC bio sequencing analysis. To conclude, if you want to know more about the methylation typing, motif typing, and fine mapping, as well as the methylation binning method, you can check out our preprint on BioArchive. In this work, we characterize the diversity of DNA methylation signal. We also characterize motifs through nanodisco, meaning finding the modification type and the modified position within the motifs. We provide also a method through nanodisco for metagenome methylation binning, which allow you to group genomic contigs to link mobile genetic elements to their host, as well as, which I did not show in this talk, but also identify potential misassemblies. I'd like to thank you for your attention, and I'd like to thank my, the people from my lab. So uh, my PI, Gongfang, Andy, Yimang, me, as well as Xue Song and Martin Blazer from NYU Langon, and Alexei Fomenkov and Sir Richard Roberts for their, from NEB for their help and uh, expertise. Thank you. <laughs>